Hi, what's up you guys? So we all dream about having financial freedom. We do have certain goals in life. We do have really big goals in life. But sometimes when it comes to the finances or creating wealth, it seems unattainable or even a, a little bit too far. But most of the time it's because you haven't really gone down to break it down or also to have a clear plan on how to achieve these goals. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about calculating your financial freedom number. There's just a few steps you can really take to get this, you know, realized in a very short time, but also in a systematic way. All you have to do is to actually look at your numbers. So what this does for you is it will give you some kind of clarity in where you are, where you want to be and how you are going to get there. Usually if you plan out something, you have won the battle like really 50 percent of it so what is financial freedom to you is it something you would say like um if i have one million us dollars then i've reached financial freedom is it paying off a house is it living in a certain area you know the answers really vary but most of the time i would caution you into what answers you give back to this question because sometimes you might find yourself giving answers depending on superficial norms you know because society thinks if you have this much then you're financially free this is supposed to be something personal to you so you get your financial freedom number by calculating the expenses you have on a monthly basis typically you're advised to look like 12 months back to see how you've been spending your monies over the time so after you have gotten the consistent monies that keep going out of your account in terms of expenses then that is supposed to be the number you are going to be striving to achieve you know in passive income the goal is to have this money flowing in in passive income not money that you're actively going to be working for because the point of achieving financial freedom is to be able to one point say i don't want to go to work and there's nothing that's gonna happen you want to go to vacation and you can't go without you know feeling like you're sacrificing on the income that you might be bringing in while you are away the freedom to be able to spend time with family and everything is all set you want to reach at a certain point where the monthly expenses that you are incurring on a monthly basis are taken care of through your passive income it is passive income that I want you to pay attention to because if it is active income, then you are still in the rat race. So you want to look at that and also after you, you know, while you're going through that process, a few things are going to happen. You're first of all going to understand where you are and how you are going to, you know, be able to plan to get out of that state if that's not what you like. You're also going to be able to get creative on how, you know, to get different investments going for you to be able to achieve this financial freedom i want you to be able to go through this look at all the essential you know expenses that you incur on a monthly basis calculate them down and when you get that you know summation at the end use that as a benchmark to and because that is your financial freedom number okay everyone this is the point when we're going to talk about the exact facts and figures for you to be able to realize this financial freedom that you are you know desiring at this point we are talking about some sort of budgeting in this stage you have to be able to get down and understand not only just your income sources where you make your money currently what you're earning how much money is coming into your account as of right now such that you can be able to offset it and see what you're remaining with so we want to look at your income but if we can leave that to the side because right now we want to know how much money we are putting out in expenses to be able to look forward to making such monies in passive income and then we can achieve financial freedom at the end of that this journey so uh we are seeing that in this part i have put down the household bills and looking at rent this is all hypothetical you can put in your numbers afterwards 
I will share this spreadsheet uh, for you to be able to, you know, do your calculations. It's quite simple. You can literally do it yourself, but I'll put it in the link be below. Uh, this is going to be your mortgage or your rent. Currently, this person pays about 700 and we can see the car payments are at about 3300, you know, 3300 three hundred and thirty dollars we can see the phone bills we can see some subscriptions food gym there's gas and then we can see there's some kind of personal care utilities and some pocket money and we also see some insurances going to personal items this could be watches or stuff around the house and we are seeing the car insurance is about 150 dollars the house computers the phone and all these come to a total um so this person father goes ahead and you know spends um some monthly these are not specifically incomes sorry these are not specifically expenses but this is something that they do on a monthly basis so let's just put it there because it is something they find it they find passionate they that you know they're passionate about so let's just put it there because it's it's a bill for them it's a bill for them and we're going to see that the total is also in this category. It's about 1500 and, you know, just a little bit over 1500. So the total expenses altogether at this point is a total is a summation between this amount here of, you know, the fixed monthly essentials for the household bills, which is about, you know over 1900 we also have the insurances added onto this and we have this savings and donations category and we have a total of about 3712 so that's how much they spend if we can bring this income from up here and we add it on here we can see that they have a surplus oh excuse my spellings here the surplus of about 4888 dollars $488 is what they remain with after everything. So the goal is to be able to achieve this monthly expense, you know, money is in passive income. This is where you will get down to scratching your head and see what kind of investments you're going to take on that will be giving you this amount sustainably. You need to be able to raise this money on a monthly basis, you know, and then you can count yourself as financially free at that moment. But this doesn't have to stop here. If this doesn't suit your ideal life, you can always switch it up. So whichever, you know, fluctuations you can do here and there, you can always do, you know, add them in or take them out, depending on what you see is, you know, deemable for you in your lifestyle. So the total expenses being 3700 on a monthly basis we are seeing that on a yearly you know count we can see that this we take this amount which is monthly time was 12 months so that make up a year and we see that the total you are going to need on a month on a yearly basis is you have to be able to raise forty four thousand five hundred dollars on a yearly basis so you have to be striving to get an income generating source that can give you at least that so if this is your goal you you will you know ideally have to find out how much will you need to be invested for someone like me who is looking at the stock market i'll be looking at calculations that do with the stock market i'll ideally need about one million and a hundred and thirteen thousand a little bit more around there and how i got this calculation is by calculating the annual you know income that i'll probably need in expenses by 25 so you multiply the annual the, the income you know the expenses which is 44 here times 25 so we get the 25 from the four percent rule whereby it is believed that if you can be able to invest a certain amount in your portfolio you can be able to draw four percent off of it and it will sustain you for you know a long period of time so if you're looking at four times 25 it is equally a hundred and you know if you look at getting four forty four thousand five hundred times 25 
times you will be able to see how much you need to invest in the stock market for you to be able to draw out the 4% on a yearly basis without disrupting your savings and then it will be sustainable for over a very long period of time. This is something that you can work towards. It's not something that's going to come just like that, but you can speed it up. You can speed it up a bunch of ways, increasing your income sources, you increasing on the assets that you need to be able to bring in income and also cut back on your expenses. That is also something you can also look into. How can you cut back on expenses? Ideally, not many people will be having this as part of their expenses because this is something that is part of goals, really. Somebody, you know, depositing towards a retirement fund is goals. Maybe charity could be a bill, not really a bill bill, but you know, it's some kind of expense that someone goes on to take on. And then if they took that off and let's say they're no longer paying for cars and then, oops, the car payments are gone. Uh, what else can you cut out here? Um, I think for the most part, this is what you could cut back. And then you can see that your total expenses are also going down currently. This is something you can try to aim for cutting back on your expenses as you increase your income. So if this is what you, you will be, you know, ideally striving to get on a yearly basis, 22,500, a little bit above with some change, then your investment should be investment goal. If you're investing in the stock market should be around, uh, the $564,000 around there or a little bit more, a little bit less. In the comments below, please let me know what your financial freedom number is. Let me know what investments you're planning to go into. How are you going to raise this passive income consistently on a monthly basis? And also, you know, just like this video, subscribe and share to whoever you might find, might find this helpful. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.